They couldn't stop him. Now he's back. This is your look at the new NECA Toys Halloween 2 Retro Cloth, Laurie Strode, and Dr. Sam Loomis. From the classic 1981 sequel Halloween 2, Dr. Loomis and Laurie Strode stand approximately 8 inches tall and come dressed in cloth clothing. Each figure is highly detailed and fully poseable, featuring the authorized likenesses of Donald Pleasance and Jamie Lee Curtis. Before we take a trip to Haddonfield Memorial Hospital, the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall the Laura Strode and Sam Loomis retro cloth figures are. While I'm getting those all in order, I'd like to also send out a big thank you to the folks over at NECA Toys that provided the sample that we're having a look at in this review. If you're in the market of picking up the retro cloth Lori and Loomis for yourself, you should be able now to find them in retail stores and online stores as well. Lori Strode stands 7.7 .7 inches in height, and let's get that switched to centimeters, which makes the figure be 19.7, She's a little over, a little over 19 and a half centimeters tall. Switching that back to inches for Loomis. There we go. Getting it to the very top of his head. Stopping it right there. Loomis is going to be a little bit taller by of Lori. A little taller than Lori. Just by how much? Loomis stands 8 inches. Exactly. And again, switching that to centimeters, then you're looking at the retro cloth Sam Loomis standing 20.4. Almost 20 and a half centimeters tall. Normally, this would have been the time that I would have brought in the retro cloth Halloween to Michael Myers as a comparison with the Lori and the Loomis that we're going to be looking at in this review. That would have happened. However, I can't seem to locate where I put that retro cloth Michael. I know I did bring him out when we were looking at the Halloween capsules. And then after that, I don't know where the figure went to. I suspect a small pair of hands may have actually picked up Michael and carried him off to a different room. When eventually I do find that figure, likely there's going to be a follow-up where I'll show you what it looks like along with that retro cloth Michael. In the meantime, with a slight setback aside, let's have a look at the accessories that come included with Loomis and Lori. First, starting with the pumpkin. No, it's not the pumpkin that appears at the beginning of the movie where the intro has the pumpkin opening up and the skull is inside of it. Instead, this is the promotional artwork that they use for the poster advertising Halloween 2, where we see this pumpkin with the skull on the front. Like with the poster, the skull is more of a brighter color against the rest of the orange backdrop of the pumpkin. And just showing you what the pumpkin looks like, really nice texture work that they added to the surface of it, really giving it that look like it's a real pumpkin. I like the brighter colors that they use to the face so the skull stands out, and I much especially like that dark color that they used for the socketed areas of his eyes, the nose, and the mouth as well. Real nice use of additional dark black to really allow those details to pop and stand out. In addition to all the texture work that they did to the surface of the pumpkin, I especially also like the additional darker orange that they used, just so that some of those things stand out, especially like the little crease lines in between the bumps and ridges of the pumpkin. I also really like the dark color that they used on the bottom to kind of make it look like the pumpkin's decaying a slight bit. Really nice touch that they would include that. Eventually, when I do get that Michael Myers, I know he's somewhere, probably going to be displaying the figure in the middle or I'll probably reenact that scene where Michael Myers is shot in the eyes. Speaking of shot in the eyes, let's have a look at the two guns that come included with the figures. And now, in the packaging, it may actually look like the pistol... The pistols are identical to one or one another, and they're actually not. Like in the movie, they're two different models completely. The main one that comes included with Loomis is, of course, a Smith & Wesson Model 15. This is his go-to firearm of choice, and he's used this many of times. I shot him six times, probably a little bit more than six times. Uh, you can see it's been molded in black plastic, but then additionally to that, it looks like they've added just a little bit of silver to the surface of the plastic. In addition to that, they've added this caramel brown to the wood handle of the gun and even painted the pin that sandwiches the two halves of the handle together. And they've done that in gold. Really nice small touch that I, I really appreciate. Of course, I'm going to be displaying Loomis most likely with the Smith & Wesson in his hand. But then we can go ahead and look at Lori's gun. And let me just see if I can put the two together. 
just so you guys can see the difference between the two. Now, in the movie, actually, this particular gun, if I can get the camera to focus, there we go. In the movie, this particular gun was pulled from the Marshall, uh, when the one that comes to claim Loomis. This actually is not a Smith & Wesson, but a Colt Trooper Mark III. And this is the thing that Laurie uses to shoot in the eyes of Michael Myers and, of course, blind him. I think in actual fact, if she was to use a Colt Trooper, it would probably just blow his head right off. But we have to suspend a little bit of disbelief. Just to show you the difference between the two, the Colt Trooper again on the top, the Smith & Wesson on the bottom. They're very similar, but one is just a little bit bigger. And this is the one that you'll want to use and display with Lori if you want to put the gun in her hand. So I do like the fact that they give them episode, not episode specific, but certainly scene specific pistols for each one of the characters to hold. The last thing that comes included with the figure and more specifically for Loomis is the hand that holds the lighter. It is time, Michael, as he, of course, he says it's time. And then he lights this and, of course, blows up that entire room. I do like the fact that they gave us a sculpted hand that holds the lighter as opposed to giving us a standalone lighter that we would then have to sandwich in between the fingers and the palm. Giving us such a small accessory like a lighter on its own would more likely result in it being lost. I would guarantee he'd probably lose that, that lighter in his hand as it would be something that definitely would fall out. As you can see, it's painted well for the most part. There is some of the flesh coloring there on the fingers that you can see where the flesh coloring has bled onto the lighter, so it's not completely all yellow. With the accessories now aside, let's get a closer look now at Dr. Sam Loomis and Lori Strode, and I feel like both figures turned out really good from NECA Toys. I'm going to look at Dr. Loomis first, only because the only other time and instance that we've ever gotten ourselves a Loomis from NECA Toys was part of that night he came home set, which of course had the front porch and Michael Myers. And even though that was the only Loomis that we had up to this point, I think we can all admit that that figure has not held up well for sculpting and, of course, his limited articulation. The fact that we are now finally seeing a retro cloth release of Loomis himself, I gotta feel it's because they freed up the licensing and they have it available now, and it hopefully means that a few steps from now we may finally see ourselves an updated Ultimate Dr. Sam Loomis. I don't want to get ahead of myself, I don't want to be too hopeful, but I gotta feel like that's, that's what they've got planned. In the meantime, let's get a closer look at Loomis himself. Picking the figure up and getting a closer look at the head portrait. And I don't feel like they could have gotten a better likeness to Loomis. Now, I have seen some images online where people have mentioned that their Loomis head sculpt had some sort of seam line running along the head. And I don't know if I just lucked out. It may have been just a limited batch number of those head sculpts. But I don't seem to have any issues at all with Loomis's head sculpt here. There are lines, yes, on the sides of his head. But those are veins right there and right there on the other side. I think that's a perfect likeness to Donald Pleasance, rest his soul, who played, of course, Dr. Loomis all the way up to the curse of Michael Myers. It's sad that that sort of was his last outing as Dr. Loomis, because I know a lot of people don't really like the curse of Michael Myers. It's one of my personal favorites. But I do feel like that's a really good likeness to Dr. Loomis. You can see with his beard as well, that real noted Loomis beard that I haven't seen very many people pull off. I would love to be able to pull off a Loomis beard, but I don't think I'm going to do that. You can see there's like really nice color work that they've added to the hair. What little there is, of course, of it. It does look like there's a couple of different colors at play. More of a darker brown, and it looks like there's just a slight bit of gray that's been added in there as well. Now, again, the fact that we are getting ourselves a likeness, a available likeness, finally, of Loomis, you got to feel like NECA Toys is planning an ultimate release of this guy down the road. Or even, even if they were to re-release this guy as a retro cloth release, just give him the scarring on the side and he could instantly be Loomis from Halloween 5 or Halloween 4. Halloween 5, I kind of like a little bit more. He's a little more crazier Loomis. But nonetheless, I mean, easily, they could re-release this guy give us a brand new, slightly, slightly retooled head sculpt. And instantly we can have ourselves a Halloween 4 and Halloween 5 Dr. Sam Loomis. Because really, like, the outfit doesn't change all that much. Speaking of his outfit, of course, the traditional outfit for Loomis consists of his long trench coat, his brown suit, white shirt, and tie underneath. If you were thinking, though, that you could remove the trench coat, technically you can. The only thing that's a, a bit of a, 
a bit of a shame is the fact that if you do roll down the sleeves of the trench coat, he doesn't actually have a fully finished suit. And I guess they've done that because, well, it does allow then the articulation on the hands to work a little bit better. They did, of course, a, a, a suit jacket completely from the top of his shoulder to the end of his sleeve. That would, of course, cost some additional cost to produce that. And I'm perfectly fine. I mean, the times of me ever wanting to display Loomis in just the jacket without the trench coat would be slim to none. So I'm not really disappointed at all the fact that they didn't finish the suit because, again, my preferred look of displaying the figure would likely be the trench coat on or most, most likely be the trench coat on and maybe just having the collar just slightly, slightly up. I do like the tailor work that they did to the, the actual trench coat. It's a little on the stiff side. I suppose you could probably soften that up, but it looks like they used a very th a much thicker material for the trench coat. The result of that is it does look a little on the stiff side, but you could, again, probably soften that up a bit. As we move a little bit further down, of course, we've got the rest of his brown suits consisting of brown pants, and he does have brand new shoes as well. In case you're also curious, even though we are going to talk about that soon in articulation, this is a brand new body that they're using. And along with that, that means that Loomis does have much needed ankle articulation utilizing those brand new retro cloth bodies. Just before we get to the articulation, though, on Loomis, I want to show you guys the hands. Obviously, one hand is going to be suited for holding his Smith & Wesson. We just slide the handle into his grip just like so wiggle that down into his hands between the thumb of course his fingers and his palm just feed that in like so and they've done it in such a way that you can actually line up the finger so it's sitting on the trigger so if you want to have him shooting michael six times you can actually pull that off the other hand is rather interesting because the hand that he comes included with is the one that has the lighter so you can reenact the scene where he says michael it's time the other hand, though, kind of looks like it was supposed to do the exact same thing. It kind of looks like he's ready to flip a coin. I'm not really sure why they gave him this specific hand. I mean, depending on the way that you display the figure, you're probably not going to display him with both the lighter hand and then also the pistol hand or the pistol in his hand. You're probably not going to display him with both because obviously it's the exact same hand. It only goes on this side. So when you look at this hand, I'm not really sure specifically what this hand is supposed to be doing. It kind of looks like he's holding something. He's hiding something in his fingers. I think I would have just preferred instead a relaxed grip. Anyways, for the articulation on Loomis, let's have a look at that right now. His head rotates all the way around. It's on a ball joint. It hinges down. It hinges up. And you actually can get quite a range back and forth as well. And because this is a brand new, using a brand new retro cloth body, it means this Loomis also does have an upper torso ball joint. In addition to that, the arms do hinge out on both sides. You can move the arms forward. You can move the arms back. You can swivel at the bicep. You can double hinge on the elbow, which is a nice touch. And you can also rotate the hand all the way around. Somebody I'm sure is going to be asking me how it looks with the lighter hand. So let's go ahead and just pop that off replace it with this hand instead just pop that into place and you can have loomis there it's time michael it's a horrible impression as for the rest of the articulation on the figure he does have a waist swivel his legs split out you can go forward and back on the legs he has a swivel on the top cut of the thigh he has a single hinge knee and so thankful for this that they're using the newer bodies for loomis it does mean now he gets the afforded ankle articulation the ankle pivot he doesn't have any toe articulation, mind you. You can only move it up and down. But at the very least, Loomis does have ankle articulation, and that's always a good thing. Now let's have a look at Lori. But just before we look at Lori, there's one last thing I wanted to talk about when it came to Loomis's hand. That one hand that I mentioned earlier looking slightly awkward in the way it was sculpted. I'm wondering if it has something to do with the way that at the very end of the movie, Loomis is stabbed. And then just before he holds up that lighter, he's sort of holding the side of his body. And I'm wondering if the hand is deliberately sculpted in that way so that you can somewhat recreate that last moment of Loomis as of what I'm currently got him posed in right now. It's not to say that I still wouldn't have wanted an alternate hand just so that the hand could be used for other things. But I'm wondering if maybe that's the reasoning why the hand is sculpted the way that it is. 
That being said, let's finally have a look at Lori. Now, Lori here is pulled from Halloween 2. Ironically, the only other Lori that NECA Toys has ever released is the 2018 Lori, which completely cuts the canon out of Halloween 2. So really, in some actual fact, this Lori shouldn't even exist by today's Halloween trilogy. And that's really disappointing to me, but I'll talk about that on a later date. I certainly don't want to bog this entire review down talking about how disappointed that the 2018 cut out not only the canon of all the Halloweens after Halloween 1, but also cut what I felt was the much-needed connection between Laurie Strode and her brother, Michael Myers. That being said, let's get a closer look at her head sculpt. We have a much younger-looking Laurie sporting, I might also add, a wig over top of that. Very noticeable in the movie that she has much fuller hair. It does have a little more of a fake look to the hairstyle. But I do really like how this Laurie head sculpt did turn out. Some people had mentioned and posted pictures online that their head sculpt of Lori didn't look very good. Some issues with QC was like, I think one eye was wandering off to the side. Again, maybe I was just lucky enough that both Loomis and Lori, I feel, have good looking head sculpts. I feel like that's a really good likeness to Jamie Lee Curtis. The only thing I would have added on to this is that while she does have her hospital outfit, which we'll talk about in a second, the gown, of course, that she wears, I'm wondering if they could have had the license available to at least include clothing that she would have wore from Halloween 1. So that if you wanted to, even though, yes, technically she does have the bandage on her hand, I wonder if you could have actually just taken the robe off and then dressed her in the Halloween 78 outfit. But again, it may have stemmed from the fact they just don't have the licensing yet available for the 78 Halloween movies. So, of course, this is why we have to get ourselves a Halloween 2 Laurie Strode. Nonetheless, though, I'm really happy with how the head sculpt turned out. The paint is really clean on this one. She does have her mouth slightly open, but I do feel like that's a good likeness to Jamie Lee Curtis. The hair is also very nicely sculpted as well. It's a little fuller, yes, like in the movie, so it's not as straight as she has it in the first Halloween movie. It's a really nicely sculpted figure, of course, utilizing a thinner retro cloth body. There are, of course, the areas of her, of her arms that are just one shade lighter it seems than the actual the actual tone of her fingers or the tone of her hands the hands are a little bit darker you'll see than the rest of her arms it's not too much that it looks too stark of a change but it is a little bit darker than the rest of her arms she of course is wearing her robe and uh she does actually have sculpted in a sculpted in chest which i don't know why i'm showing you but just to show you that they actually it looks like they've used a brand new sculpt for the body i won't spend too much time showing you that but it's just enough to show you that neca toys looks like they used a brand new body for lori and then simply just put of course the hospital robe over top of it there's some damage to it of course so there's the blood there on the shoulder a little bit of dripping of that running onto the sleeve and of course, while she doesn't have it on this side, she's got a little hospital band. The other side, she does have the taped up hand that also has blood seeping through, as you can see. As we move a little bit further down, she just has the bare legs. And of course, she's got underwear on underneath that. Uh, bare feet, but then one foot, of course, has that wrapped up in bandages. It's unfortunate, though, on my lorry that this one ankle is a little loose. Sort of ironic, really, when you think about it. Half the time, Lori is dragging herself on the ground that this figure also, for me at least, is a little bit loose in the ankle. So at the beginning of this review, I actually used the display stand just to guarantee that she wasn't falling over. Again, they would have used a brand new sculpt for the ankle because there really isn't any other female figure that would have used a cast leg. And it's probably one thing that it's going to be a one and we're done. I can't see them using this for any other figure. Like in the movie, the back heel is exposed. She does have peg holes in the undersides of her feet. So I do want to make use of a display stand for this specific figure. Because like I said, Lori has some difficulty standing. Let's have a look at the articulation on Lori. Her head is on a ball joint. But unfortunately, it does still limit what you can do with her head. Because her hair is so considerably long and made of a dense plastic. While you can rotate her head all the way around... You really can't do too much moving the head up and down, nor can you do very much when it comes to rocking the head back and forth. That's about as much as you're really going to get. As for the arms, the arms give you almost a full 90 degree angle bend. You can rotate the arms back and forth. There's a swivel joint happening just actually underneath the sleeve there, and she only has a single hinge on the elbow. The hands rotate all the way around. 
You can hinge those also back and forth as well. She is very limited when it comes to her torso articulation because they gave her a brand new sculpt here with some additional <clears throat> definition. Uh, means that you really only can limit, you only really have a swivel on the, on the waist. That's about as much as you can actually pull off on the figure. Legs split out. You go forward and back on the legs. They swivel at the top cut, essentially where that thigh is attached. You can see right there, that's where the swivel point is. Single hinge on the knee. And then she has only just an up and down joint on her leg or on her ankle. You can't move it back and forth. So it looks like they're using, in this case for Lori, the older style of retro cloth bodies. Even though this is probably a brand new mold, they only gave us just a straight hinge. I really would have loved if this figure could have possessed also an ankle pivot, but unfortunately that's not the case with Lori. She does have, again, those peggles on the undersides of her feet. So I feel like in the case of Lori, just because there is this one ankle that's a little loose on mine, I'm probably going to use a display stand. Most definitely, I'm probably going to utilize a display stand. Still great to get, finally, both a brand new Lori and a brand new Loomis. And not even from the recent movie either. 2018 uh, Lori was fine and good. But I still like to get more figures of the older Lori. Or I guess younger Lori in this case. In this case, we've got ourselves the hospital gown Lori. Which I guess is the next best thing to the 78 Lori. Could they have given us extra clothes to change out of her gown that she's wearing? Of course, put her in more casual clothes. That I don't know because it probably would have treaded on a licensing agreement when it comes to the 78 license rights. And maybe they probably couldn't be able to do that. The closest thing we have is Retro Cloth Lori from Halloween 2. And really both the figures, both Loomis, both Lori, turned out to be great looking figures. The fact that we're finally getting retro cloth releases of even any of them just makes me so happy inside as Halloween is one of my all-time favorite horror franchises. Could we see ourselves a Loomis down the road in an ultimate release? The possibility is there, but I still think there's possibilities as well to make use of this existing mold. They really don't have to change anything to Loomis at all other than slightly tooling a new hand and slightly retooling his head sculpt to give us a Loomis from Halloween 4 and 5, and that would be fun as well. It always seems to happen without fail. I could have a figure in my collection and know exactly where it is on every day of the week until the day that I need it for a comparison in a new video, and then sure enough, that figure just disappears. It just vanished. That was the case with Michael Myers. I knew exactly where he was a couple of weeks ago when we were looking at the Halloween 2 capsules, and then, lo and behold, when it's time to compare him with Loomis and Lori, he just vanished. Poof, just like a puff of smoke. Just like a puff of smoke. I don't even know where he went to. Despite not having Myers anywhere in this review, it doesn't tarnish how good these figures actually turned out. I know some people posted images online with issues that they had with Lori's face. And how the face, I think some of the eyes were off. I don't feel like that's across the board. It might have just been a bad batch. Because... As hopefully you saw in this video, the Lori and the Loomis look great. I have no issues, no defects or anything with either one of their faces. The only thing I really have an issue with is Lori's one ankle. And that's not necessarily the way that she was sculpted. I just have a, a bad ankle on Lori Strode. So I'm going to make use of a display stand. I've got enough of those NECA clear stands. I'm just going to use one with Lori Strode. And when I eventually find Michael Myers, and no doubt, no doubt he's going to pop up, the moment I finish hitting record on this video, I'm going to turn around and he's going to be right there. It's probably going to take a couple of days at least. If I can find him, I'll do a follow-up video. Because most definitely when it comes to displaying these great looking figures, I'm going to want to display it along with the retro cloth Michael Myers, which I really was a big fan of as well. A big thank you to the folks over at NECA Toys that provided the sample of the retro cloth Lori and Dr. Sam Loomis. Let me know down below in the comments section whether you picked the setup for yourself or based on this review what you guys think of the two figures. Also, if you're new to the channel and you're liking the content you're seeing, consider the idea of hitting that subscribe button down below. And also, move on over to that bell notification and turn that on. Don't worry, I sanitize it every single time somebody hits that. I go in there with the sanitizing spray. Pshhh, wipe it down nice and clean so the next person has a fully sanitized bell notification. Keep your peepers peeled because there's definitely going to be a lot more videos coming your way Monday to Friday, 12 p.m., and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.